future me here. Turns out I made a lot of mistakes in the first video I uploaded, so this is a re-upload, and I've fixed those mistakes. So definitely stick around if you want to check those out. If you came here looking for a review of the Zima Board 832, you're going to be disappointed. There's already a thousand videos of that online. So today we're just going to be doing a bit of a demonstration and checking out if this thing is capable of capturing 1080p video from, let's say, like a laptop or a gaming computer. And we're going to attach a Elgato 4K 60 Pro to it, the version 2 version. So it's a PCI Express adapter. And hopefully, everything works out. Now, the this should be more than cake. Oh. Cake, it stop. Okay, now that the crunching's done, this should be more than capable of handling all the 4K, or sorry, 1080p capturing because this can do 4K transcoding. So I think 1080p should be pretty easy. And it's not like we're gonna be throwing anything too crazy at it, just 1080p 60 and standard definition stuff. So not a big deal. So it's pretty cool. Uh, it comes with a SATA adapter, which is uh, nice, I guess, if you need additional storage. Obviously the IO on this is pretty limited. So having uh, the option for some SATA is cool. Maybe in place of SATA, they could have done USB-C, but I, that would probably take up more PCIe lanes. I'm not really sure. Uh, and then of course we have a power adapter, All right? Nothing too interesting. I do like how this box opens, so that's that's actually pretty cool. Right, so not a whole lot of information on the box about the actual specs of this thing. It just tells us things like, oh, it can support up to 36 terabytes of storage. This is apparently PCI 2.0 by four. Uh, that's interesting. I'm surprised that um, PCI 3.0 by default. And I don't know, two gigabit ports is cool. It'd be cool if this was PoE. So dude, this is such a low power device. Having PoE in would have been great, but whatever. I understand why they have a barrel connector and there's no power button. So that's gonna be odd. That's an interesting choice. Anyway, uh, I think that's all. Oh, we have a manual in the box as well. And some stickers. Hey, love the stickers. All right, with all that out of the way, let's just go ahead and get this thing connected to the Elgato 4K cap PCIe capture card. And let's see what we can do. Oh yeah, also I'm gonna have to install Windows on the on the Zima board. So we won't be using Kaza OS, which I don't know, maybe, maybe we can figure out something to do with it later. But as far as I know, the Elgato um, capture card does not work on Linux. So because of that, we will have to install Windows. Now, I think there are drivers, open source drivers that you can use to install um, the Elgato capture card on Linux, but I honestly just don't feel like doing it. I just want this to kind of work and I don't know, it'd be pretty cool to have it as like a mobile capture device, I think, especially since it's so small. So, all right, let's get all this out of the way. All right, let's, uh, Let's get everything hooked up. To get this thing switched over to Windows, we're gonna need a few things like external storage because this only has 32 gigabytes on board and Windows is pretty big. And it's gonna take up a lot of the storage space. Thankfully, I already have a USB uh, thumb drive with Windows installed on there with the media creation tool so we can get that done fairly quickly. And with our external drive, we should have plenty of room to capture some video while I play some games. Obviously, this is just for demonstration purposes, but I'm expecting good things. So. I'm going, you can't see this, I also have a monitor right here, but I am going to go ahead and get that done and installed so we can, oh, I need my capture card. I was like, what am I forgetting? Uh, I can install the capture card later. So anyway, I'm gonna get all that done off camera so you guys, gotta, you guys don't have to watch all the boring stuff. We'll be using this gaming PC, or well, it's not gaming PC, we'll be using this computer to play some games while we capture to the Elgato 4K Capture Pro, of course. And that way, we can get all of our gaming footage captured. So this, this should work out pretty well, I think. We just gotta get everything situated here. It's a lot, got a lot going on. <laughs> uh, I need to get power for this too, so it doesn't turn off. And we don't need this mouse or keyboard, I suppose. So let's just, Let's just get this out of the way. Okay. Mm, oh, I have power right here. Perfect. Okay. Uh, OBS is already installed. I think we're good to go. We just need to to do. I wanted to give, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a different angle so we can kind of watch all this stuff live. Uh, let's just, just go ahead and hit play here and then we'll talk about OBS itself. But obviously the displays are duplicated so everything should work on one. And so far it's working like you would expect. Uh, we haven't started, oh, there's a little latency. I don't know if you guys can see this. 
It's kind of skipping around a bit over here. Uh, let's bring up task manager. We haven't even started doing anything, so. Ooh, there's some bad latency. And task manager's not responding. Uh, that's not good. Come on, you can do it. What do you what do you do when task manager fails its job? Support is cut off, Captain. We need to hold here until she can move in. Oh man, we're trapped in here. We're screwed. We're screwed, man. Okay, we'll just so that was at a hundred percent CPU usage. This is probably not gonna fare well at just recording. So let's just try. Let's close this again. We we we're gonna try and save all the resources we can. We're gonna run this as administrator. I find that running OBS as administrator occasionally yields better performance, better settings. I think we're good. Okay, so we're gonna let that load. Let's get you guys a closer look so you can see the settings and, and you can get a better picture of what's going on here. You can tell there's a lot of latency already. Okay, you guys have a front row seat now. So for settings, we're obviously gonna do 1080p everything while I can't even do anything. Jeez. Oh, there we go. While this device is supposedly capable of handling 4K transcoding, which I do believe it can do, but we haven't tested that yet. Right now, we've just set to you know export MKV. We're doing high quality, medium file size, and of course, we're doing hardware um, transcoding with QSV. This this device is capable of QSV transcoding, which is great because it's newer. And that's it. We haven't we haven't done anything else. We're just gonna go with the bare minimum here. I think this is gonna look pretty good. I don't really. I do care about quality, but we're not going to go too crazy with it in terms of trying to get the most quality out of it. And of course, you're doing 1920 by 1080. So let me. Jeez, it's pretty stuttery. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to make sure I'm exporting video to my hard drive as well. All right, we're, we're sitting at 14% CPU usage and we haven't even done anything yet. Let's just start recording. There's a lot of latency here when I hit that record button. I am not confident it's actually doing anything. Hard drive sounded like it's spinning up. Still not recording. Uh, task manager, everything's crashed. Okay, so I don't think we can record. Let's see if we can just reboot get out of all these programs and we'll we'll run this again we'll do one more attempt oh wow i can't even reboot right now you're serious just just get all right we're, we're pulling oh. the oh that is hot holy cow that's probably like 54 c maybe nearing 60. that is toasty right windows is back open let's open task manager here I'm just going to go through and look at if there's any, we're going to end some tasks here. So I've got the Intel graphics command center software running. It's using 44% of our CPU. I'm going to try and end task that, uh, that we still have the in, Intel graphics command center, uh, service running. So that's probably fine. We still have the HD drivers going. That's fine. Uh, I don't see any other services i can kill here it's still it's still pretty bare bones so let's just let's just try this again hopefully we get different results but the definition of insanity is we're gonna also run as administrative mode hey the latency looks a lot better already okay so there's just a couple of reboots let's try and record and it's still blue. I don't think it's working. We're just let's just go ahead and play. Maybe we'll maybe we will be capturing stuff. We'll let that sit. See what we get. I mean, it looks like it's working. I, I don't know what the problem could be. Latency is a little bad. Uh, don't mind the screen tearing. That's probably just the monitor's fault. I'm not too worried about that. I don't even know if you guys can see the screen tearing. Wow, I forget how beautiful Oblivion is. Holy cow, this game looks awesome.
we're only using 13% of our CPU, so I have a feeling this isn't capturing 1080p at 60 FPS. I don't think it's doing anything. I don't think it's truly doing anything. Okay, let's let's see what's going on here. This this isn't recording. Let's see if we can open up Windows Explorer. Yep, folder's empty. This is this isn't doing anything. Okay, well, um, I don't know what to do. Right, so everything I tried with Windows failed miserably and I wasn't able to actually get to the part where I could press the start recording button. They even installed Elgato's um, software that I've already forgotten the name of. So that way we could try using that. Maybe OBS just had a problem with the capture card, which I doubt, but nonetheless, uh, we're gonna switch this thing back over to Casa OS. So. I have to download Kaza OS and install it from uh, Zima Board's website, which is actually kind of nice. So you can use Etcher and it will install Clonezilla or Etcher will install their, install their ISO, a bootable ISO onto this. And Zima Board software uses Clonezilla that installs Debian and Kaza OS on top of that. So that's what we're gonna try and do. I actually, I don't know why I'm trying to plug this in. I need to, I need to do that process. Where's my MacBook? I need my MacBook. All right, well, I'm not gonna show you that part either. We're just gonna cut to the part where I'm trying to use Casa OS. For this next part, when working with Casa OS and Jellyfin, I just need to give a huge shout out to Mike Foucher for actually pushing me to take a look at my configuration again to double check to make sure everything was correct. So for this, I wanna go with these settings and things that I had to change to make sure that everything worked so that we could prove that the transcoding is in fact working correctly. So first up, I do have Jellyfin installed and one of the most important things with Jellyfin when you want to use the hardware transcoder that is available on this CPU is you have to pass through the decoder itself into the container. So here I've just added these simple lines slash dev slash DRI from the host into the container. Pretty simple stuff. And then just hit save. There was it. I didn't have to do anything else. So that was pretty easy. Now on the Jellyfin side of the house, I did have to come here into dashboard and then go to playback. And of course, make sure that Intel QSV was selected. So this generation of processors is actually capable of using QSV. Older generation Intel processors have to use VA API. I don't know what the differences are, but I just, just wanted to point that out. Uh, anyway, and the next thing I had to do just to make sure everything was working appropriately was actually enable HEVC. So this was not initially checked for me, uh, the only ones that were check marked was 264, VC1, HEVC 10 bit, VP9 10 bit. Now, I'm not sure what the difference between HEVC and 10 bit is, but now that I've, we're about to test it with a HEVC standard definition 8 bit video, and it's going to work perfectly fine. And they're also going to test with an HEVC 10 bit video, and that should also work perfectly fine. Um, I don't believe I made any other changes within Jellyfin. Everything just kind of worked from here. So uh, for the first movie that we're going to test, we're just going to take a look at this. This is HDR10, HEVC, 10-bit video, and there's not going to be any stuttering or anything like that. It's just going to just work. Now, initially when I tested this in the prior video, it would start hiccuping immediately. Uh, but as you can tell here, there's no skips, there's no pauses, it's just straight playthrough. This is what I would consider pretty much buttery smooth video. So that is great to see. And again, this is 4K HEVC HDR10 10 bit. So that's quite a load. Now, if we go back over to Kaza OS, we can actually see that the CPU is only using about 24% of its utilization or capacity, I mean to say, and we're using about 26% of the RAM and using 11.8 watts of power. That's that's pretty low. That's actually really efficient, I would say. And uh, let me turn the audio down so I don't get a copyright strike. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm confident this is gonna continue playing all the way through. No hiccups, nothing at all. And of course we're doing this over Wi-Fi. So just, you know, to prove that the capability of this device. Ooh, that's nice and warm. Getting toasty. All right, so let's get out of here. And the other movie I wanted to test is this. Uh, although I'm gonna have to start it over from the beginning. So that way I also don't get copyright striked by Sony again. All right, so this video or movie is also 4K standard definition, 
HEVC and 8-bit. So as you can see here, currently it's playing perfectly fine. Uh, really no hiccups, pauses, skips, or anything like that. Uh, we're not gonna let this video play out too much longer because again, I'm afraid of getting copyright strike, but you'll just have to take my word that it is in fact working and has worked. Um, after making my mistake the, the first time and saying that this doesn't work, uh, trust me when I say this is definitely working now. So I've gone back through and made sure everything's cool. Well, if there are any doubts about the efficiency of this, let's cr um, crush them now. So this is 0.18 kilowatts per hour, which is pretty much nothing. So we've got a runtime of 73 hours and 52 minutes, and we've only consumed 0.18 kilowatts per hour. That's, that's pretty efficient. And you know, we've been encoding and selling operating systems and all that stuff. So in total thus far over the 73 hours, we've spent two cents running this thing. That's pretty low. Um, it'll cost us about $2.27 to run this thing for a year at the current consumption rate. That's, uh, that's not bad at all. Of course, you know, $18 a month <laughs> or 18 cents a month, sorry. And in my state, I pay about 13 cents per a kilowatt hour or a thousand kilowatts however that works you know what i mean to say you only pay 13 cents here that's pretty cheap it's cheap electricity and uh yeah so efficient and this thing would be great for a raspberry pi or not a raspberry pi pi dns or you know some sort of ad blocker service or something like that because it uses so little power well it is kind of disappointing that we couldn't use the zima board as a capture device while using the elgato 4k 60 pro mark ii I would still be interested in testing it with a USB capture device and see if maybe there's some differences there. Maybe it's just something to do with the PCIe bandwidth. Don't really know. But at least we can prove that this is actually still a very versatile device because it can transcode 4K, HDR10, 10-bit, HEVC encoded videos. So that's pretty impressive, I would say. And as far as versatility goes with the PCI port on the side, I did ask Zemo board to send this over here. So this is just a PCI to Wi-Fi adapter. And um, I plan on using this probably for a future video and really just, you know, maybe for some speed tests while uh, doing speed tests in the future for different devices. So that's pretty cool that, you know, we can kind of mix and match this, maybe even build our own router out of it. There's, there's so much versatility here. And I think that's what makes this most impressive. Well, maybe not most impressive. I'm definitely impressed with the 4K transcoding. But the versatility is definitely something that's useful for our home libraries out there. And I'm sure you guys can get tons of ideas of this thing because of all the home lab content that exists. And with all that being said, again, thank you, Mike Foucher. I really appreciate you pushing me to take a look at this again to complete this video. And I want to thank each and every one of you for watching and supporting this channel, because without you guys, content like this would just not be possible. Peace.